Good afternoon to all of you. I'm Lauren Legarda, 7709178. <laughs> UP Mascom, Diliman. How many of you were here during that time? No? Or were already alive during that time? I'm probably here not so much as senator, but I'd like to think of myself as a cultural advocate or cultural worker. But this hall brings back memories of Econ 11, <laughs> and that was the last time where I was here, in the late 70s, 79, or maybe 80, when Professor Monsod was giving us our lecture. And that was one of the lowest grades I ever got, because Econ and math were not my forte. I would love the AS classes or perhaps MassCom, but that's not the story. Why am I facing you here now? because I was asked to speak about the Venice Biennale. The Venice Biennale is the first, the oldest, the most prestigious contemporary art exhibition in the world. Because it is biennial, it happens every two years. And the Philippines was conspicuously absent for 51 years. But perhaps I'm going to way forward. You're probably wondering, what is a senator like Loren Legarda on her third term doing with the Venice Biennale when it should be our cultural agencies who should be propelling the Philippines into our national pavilions? Alam niyo po, ako'y pinanganak sa isang ina na ang hilig talaga ay art and culture. Ang mama ko, my late mother, kumakanta ng opera at nangongolekta ng art at ang kanyang mga kaibigan ay mga artists. What do I mean? I grew up knowing Ibarra de la Rosa, having gone to the home of H. R. Ocampo, and even frequenting the home of then master, ang tawag, pero hindi pa siya national artist, Vicente Menansala in Binongon and Rizal. I was in my young teens. And so I practically grew up in an environment and art of art and culture without even realizing it. Sabi nga nila, namulat daw ako, I learned art and culture almost the same time that I learned how to walk and how to speak because of my late mother. And so, having graduated from UP MassCom, people expected that my thesis would be about broadcast because I was AB broadcast in 81. But my thesis, which incidentally, I hope hindi naman para nagyayabang, it was best thesis of MassCom, guess what the subject matter was? A content analysis of the paintings of Vicente Manansala during the martial law era. Because as early as then, I was struck by his social realism and the cubism, and I wanted to relate it to the martial law years. That was in 1981. Fast forward, I was in television for 20 years, I went to the Senate, I'm on my third and last term till 2019. All these years, if not decades, I would visit art spaces, both contemporary and modernist. I would promote uh, art and culture, document indigenous peoples, uh, schools of living tradition, whether in my 20 years as journalist or in my three terms as senator. So from the indigenous to contemporary art, I felt I had to bring culture and art together to unite a divided nation. And I felt that government had to support it. Now, having seen many contemporary art spaces, both here and abroad, and I've heard about the Venice Biennale, I wondered, why are we not in the Venice Biennale? And that's when I posed the question to the culture agencies during a budget hearing in the mid of um, 2013. I went to the Venice Biennale in November of 2013 and so that uh, even Maldives and Tuvalu were there, a nation of one million people was represented and not a nation of a hundred million people with a very dynamic, robust contemporary art scene with brilliant artists and curators, etc. I felt bad and emotional actually. How can I do this to my country? That during my incumbency, I would not allow the Philippines to be back there. I started working. So I asked the question of all the agencies, I won't name them anymore, lahat. 
and including the Department of Foreign Affairs. And they just looked at each other and they said, there is that interest, but no one ever supported it. So I saw that if I help them and help in enabling that to happen, it would happen. And then what happened? Yolanda happened in November 8 of 2013. Then of course, all the reconstruction. And it perhaps was not the best time for the Philippines to go to the Olympics of Contemporary Art in Venice in 2015 because there was Yolanda rehabilitation. So the administrative order for the creation of the committee was not signed by the president because there were priorities. Funding was not there, etc. By that time, I and my legislative staff were already working in coordination with the National Commission on Culture and Arts. Still, I thought I should still push it, even if one day I told my staff, Hindi ko naman trabaho ito eh. Ako ay senador at lawmaker, and I'll focus on my work for climate change, environment, and I was working with the UN ISDR as well. But my staff said, Mom, we've gone this far. Even if there are no funds and there is no AO, we can do it. It's a very long story, to cut it short, with the support of the agencies of government, the DFA and the National Commission on Culture, we created a small committee, and that's the coordinating committee. Kala nyo, ganong kalaki, tatatlo ang tao. And they're really just passionate people, uh, and they're from UP. Uh, well, Ria works, is from UP, she's a professor, uh, Ria Brihino Lopez, uh, and, and my staff in the legislature, we just tried to cover for all the work. And I said, this is like going through uh, a war and we don't have the ammunition, but we're already here. We might as well work towards that date of being present in May of 2015. And so an open call was made. I felt so bad. Hindi kami pinapansin at walang nag-apply. So we extended because people were not familiar. Because remember, as Jigo said, 1964, the Art Association of the Philippines through Purita Calau Ledesma brought Jose Hoya and Napoleon Abueva. Remember, it, is, it was 2014. And so the open call was extended another month. And I said, Papano kaya ito? Wala na. Finally, on the last hour, 16 curatorial proposals with the best and brightest of contemporary art in the Philippines submitted their curatorial proposals. And our roster of judges, apart from myself and NCCH Chair De Leon and Sid Reyes, the art critic, had Mami Kataoka of the Mori Art Museum and Renaud Proch of the um, New York-based um, international curators and the multimedia artist, well-renowned um, Phil M. Uh, Dumaguete born, but uh, he, he's American, uh, Paul Pfeiffer. We looked at all. It was not easy. It was brilliant. But finally, because of the immense depth and intellectual rigor, it was Dr. Patrick Flores, the eminent scholar and brilliant curator. I can't find, uh, I'm at a loss for words to describe Patrick. And he has the discipline of academia. He made it, unanimous decision of the judges. And finally, we have Patrick there. And then, he used as a peg the newly restored Genghis Khan, which was a 1952 entry to the Venice Film Festival. And this was a poetic and political reflection on the state of affairs in the world, which was pegged on the West Philippine Sea issue, but on a broader perspective. So on one side, you have the newly restored Genghis Khan, and in another small room in the Palazzo, which we rented all of 150 square meters, is a brilliant, captivating video of Mani Mentelibano, a Negrense uh, intermedia artist who used the Palawan epic, which was the chants recorded by Nicole Revel, the French anthropologist, I think of Descartes University, if I'm not mistaken, Patrick. And it was juxtaposed with the actual incursions in sound of Chinese radio waves in the AM-FM radio, 
which was shot and sound, uh, the audio was also taken in Batarasa in southern Palawan. And in the next room was the massive shoal in velvet, in wood, and metal, which had both political and religious underpinnings of another brilliant, disciplined artist in the person of Jose Tenz Heroise. So how can you go wrong with a Botong Francisco Manuel Conde Genghis Khan and a multi-channel, three-channel video of Manny Montalibano and this incredible shoal of Jose Tenz Heroise? And so even if we did not have much budget and resources, the uh, ANN, Arts Hub, um, uh, Christie's, etc. On even the day before we opened on May 8, had must-see reviews of the Philippine Pavilion. That was May 8. We closed on November 22. It may be out of the way from Giardini and Arsenale, where most of the pavilions are, but pinupuntan tayo ng tao, not just tourists, but curators and artists and uh, the youth, the everyone. Uh, but for those who may not be able to go to Venice, the good news is the UP, our premier state university in the Vargas Museum, will host it in December of 2016. <laughs> Art reflects who we are as a people. Art reflects our soul. And culture is the string is the element that binds us as a nation, no matter how diverse and divided we are. And perhaps for as long as I'm here, for as long as I breathe, just as I was raised in an environment of art and culture and the preservation of heritage, I will continue to push for the Filipino artist because this is the very least we could do. Uh, to all of them who are probably have not had the opportunity to be able to have that global platform, to have that dialogue with other contemporary artists of the world. So I thank TEDx for having me here today so that all of you would be familiar and would be engaged with the Venice Biennale because this goes beyond my term as senator. This goes beyond Dr. Patrick Flores, our first curator. It will go on in 2016 for architecture, 2017 for the Art Biennale, 2018, 2019, etc. And I hope this will lead to a more, even more dynamic, robust, uh, contemporary art and culture scene in the country. So from the indigenous to contemporary art, I believe that this is what could unite and unify us as a nation. Thank you very much.